Welcome to episode two. This screencast is going to address Coulomb's Law. You've known Coulomb's Law from either high school or physics 203, and we're going to start the same. What we're interested in is the electric field at some point P, due to some source, and our source here is just going to be one single charge. We need to know the distance between the source and the field. I'm going to call that R. And the electric field then for the simple configuration at point P is going to be 1 over far pi E naught. That's just because we're going to use SI units. That's consistent with your book. It's going to be proportional to the charge and inversely proportional to the distance squared. All right, another important thing, though, is the vector direction of that electric field. All right, so this is a unit vector. There's no magnitude there. And all this says is that if we're at field point P and we take a positive test charge, that's the direction that charge would go. All right, it's going to go along the field line. So in this case, due to this charge distribution, just one single Q, uh, if I put a positive test charge here, it's going to want to go this way along that, along that radial line. Let's do something more complicated. What if we had many charges and we wanted to find the electric field at some point P due to this system of charges? Let's draw a system first. We'll draw an X, Y, and Z axis. And I'm interested now in the electric field again at some point P, but now due to many charges. So let's add some charges. There's a Q1. There's a Q2. Here's a Q3. Maybe a Q4 up here. And we can keep going. So again, our, our question is, what is the electric field at point P, but now due to these many charges? The great thing about Coulomb's law is that superposition applies. So the electric field at point P, uh, in order to calculate it, all I need to do is do one charge in turn. I don't have to figure out how they interact with each other. I just ignore charges 2, 3, and 4 while I'm trying to find out the field uh, due to charge 1 at point P. Then I ignore 1, and I do 2, and I sum up the vector fields individually to get the entire field. All right, let's write the equation for this, and there's going to be a little new notation, a little bit of new notation that comes with it. First of all, something that I didn't do last time on the last screen was put the vector uh, arrow. The vector arrow, it's important to keep track of what our quantities are vectors and scalars since we're going to have many, many different vector and scalar quantities here. All right, it's going to be a function of r, vector. And we're going to talk about that. 4 pi over E naught comes along for the ride. And now I need to sum up the charges. Each in turn. And this is a new parameter here, script R. It still has that squared dependence, and it's going to be script R unit vector. Okay, let me make that a little bit smaller. Move that up there, and we'll talk about what script R is. Script R is going to be extremely important for a lot of these nasty Coulomb law problems to come. As you'll see, Coulomb's law is a brute force way to calculate the electric field for a charge configuration. We'll find more clever and more elegant solutions uh, that, that'll be simple, and you should apply them when you can. But right now, we're going to start with the brute force Coulomb's law method. Script R. Script R is the vector. that goes from the charge, the source point, to the field point. So that's going to be script R. The magnitude of script R is R. All right, and then the script R direction, in this case, the script R direction due to charge 1, uh, script R 1 unit vector is that way. Okay, let's define what script R is mathematically in terms of some other vectors. So script R, this is a generic script R, for, it could be for Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, is going to be, to some different colors here, the blue vector that I'm drawing here, R, and that's what this is a function of, this is from the origin to the field point of interest. All right, so R, just regular R vector, is going to be the vector from the origin to the field point of interest. It's going to be minus R prime, and R prime is going to be the vector from the origin to the source point, okay? So let's draw those. So let's start with the origin to the field point. Origin of the field point is going to be, and let's pretend that line is straight. 
that's going to be, in this case, because we have many charges and we're, we're labeling them and number them, this will be R1. Then from the origin to the source point, that's going to be R prime 1. And I guess I should have put a 1 on that script there, that script there. That's just for 1 there. Let's not solve this one. Uh, let's move on to something more difficult. But if we could, we could sum each of these in turn, and the sum of each of the vector fields, E fields, as they act on point P, would be the total electric field for this particular distribution. Let's apply Coulomb's law to a continuous charge distribution, and we'll start with the simplest of these as well. So we could have a line of charge, and once again, we would be interested in now what the field is at a point P. And what we're going to be doing is we want to know, we're going to sum up each little bit of continuous charge now. That's going to be my line charge element DL so that the script vector R is going to be from that line element to my point of interest. All right, that's script vector R. All right, we denote the line density by lambda the line charge density lambda, and it could very well be a function of space here. We're going to do the prime because that's on the charge distribution. We're going to keep note that we're interested in the vector position. And if we wanted to know the total charge, if I summed up all these bits of charge elements, these all these little bits of DL, and I knew the line density, all I would need to do is to get Q total, I would just need to integrate all those little bits knowing the, knowing the density. So Q total would just be the sum of all those little bits knowing the surface, sorry, not the surface, the line density at those little bits. Let's move on to surface charge density. Likewise, instead of having a line of charge, you could have a sheet. And then you might be interested again in the field at some point P. And so what we would want to do is we would want to add up the area over this sheet if we knew the surface charge density in this case. So here's a little element area. And this little area of element, again, is going to have to my point of interest is going to be script R. That's a vector there. The arrows are kind of blending there. Script R vector is that, is that line there. And if we want to know the entire charge for this, uh, we're going to want to know the field, but if we want to know the, the Q total from this sheet, and I know the surface charge density now, so the surface charge density is going to be denoted by sigma, and once again it could be a function of space here. If I know the surface charge density function, all I have to do is add up all that surface charge density over, over all those little bits of area, and then I have the Q total. All right, let's make that smaller and get that out of the way. Let's maybe make this one a little smaller because we need room for our last case. Our last case, as you might expect, would be a volume of charge. So here's my goofy volume shape. But now my element, that's a very big element, is going to be a volume element. All right. So the volume element, Griffiths denotes by tau, because he wants to save V for something else. All right. So again, I'm interested in the the electric field at point P, and we're going to get to that. And there is my R script vector, because Rhea and my R script vector goes from my charge to the point of interest. And now what I need to know if I want to, if I want to know the total charge, or even if I want to know Coulomb's laws, we'll get to, I need to know the charge density, and this would be volume charge density. So I need to know rho, and rho could also be a function of space, 
that means if it's a function of space, it means the charge density isn't constant. For example, if the charge uh, density isn't constant, it means the density here might be greater than the density over there. And if you're going to add up how all the charge, how all the fields from these bits of charge sum, you better know that density function. Okay, and then if I wanted to get Q total for this one, I'm going to have to sum up all those volume elements given the density for each of those, uh, each of those points. If now I want to get the electric field at P for these distributions, here's Coulomb's law generically for each of them. It's going to be a function of our vector that's from our origin to the point of interest. That's not drawn yet on those pictures on the left. We're going to have our scaling factor 1, 4 pi, E naught because of units. And it's going to be the sum of all the bits of charge with this R squared dependence and we have to keep track of the direction. Okay, now dq is just going to be equal to lambda dl in the case of a line charge. It's going to be equal to sigma dA in the case of a surface charge and it's going to be equal to rho d tau in the case of a volume charge. Let's make that kind of small. All right, so for each one of these things, let's start with the line charge. So using the generic Coulomb's law here for the line charge the electric field is just going to be the sum of all of those little elements of line charge knowing the density but keeping track of the unit vector direction r hat and making sure we keep the r squared dependence. And that's what we have for the line charge. We're going to have similar expressions for the case of the surface charge and volume charge as well. So surface charge We're going to integrate over area instead, keeping track of the surface charge density, keeping track of the direction, and making sure to take into consideration that 1 over r squared strength. And then finally, for the volume charge, We're going to integrate over each volume element to sum up the whole volume, knowing the volume charge density. Keeping track of direction. And keeping track, or, or keeping that 1 over r squared dependence. That's it. Now basically we have to use that R script notation, keeping track, setting up our coordinates carefully, keeping track of our vectors carefully is going to what's make this thing what makes it work. On the next videos I'm going to show you examples of a line charge, a surface charge, and a volume charge. And then in class, hopefully we'll be ready to attack some more challenging line, surface, and volume 
configuration of the charges together to find out the electric field.